Well, hello and welcome back to another Champions League video. Yes, the quarterfinals have finally arrived after what has been quite an entertaining Champions League campaign competition so far. I think it's been pretty good. Seen some shock results and some not so shock results, as I think is always the case, to be honest. Without further ado, we're just going to jump straight into it with my quarterfinals predictions. I'm going to start off with Arsenal versus Bayern Munich. Arsenal will face Bayern Munich in the Gunners' first Champions League quarterfinals since the 2009-10 season. This was probably a draw they'd have been looking to avoid though, as Bayern have dealt them a lot of damage in the past, including Arsenal's last Champions League appearance, where they were dominated 10-2 on aggregate. 10-2. They held 5-1 at home. And to further add to the storied history between the two sides, former Spurs man and current Bayern and Bundesliga top scorer Harry Kane will make a return to North London. Both teams have had stumbles in their Champions League campaigns as Arsenal struggled to produce anything against Porto, needing a penalty shootout to progress, whilst Bayern fell to Lazio in their first leg of the tie. Both sides did book up their ideas though, and ultimately qualified for this quarter-final clash. I think Porto played very well against Arsenal, they shut them out extremely well and the Gunners struggled to produce anything really. So going to a penalty shootout, I mean it doesn't mean you're a bad side, but just shows how good Porto were, I think. And losing to Lazio, like, what is going on there? Come on, guys, you don't want to be doing that. Embarrassing, really. But they turned it around, Harry Kane did what he needed to do, and he dragged Bayern through to the next round. This has been a very uncharacteristic season from Bayern, though, as they're out of all domestic competitions and are currently trailing the leaders Leverkusen by 16 points. It was 13 points as I was writing this, and then they lost to Heidenheim. Oh boy. Funny club, really funny club over there. This is the first German title they're set to miss out on since 11-12. So despite Kane being on fire, it seems he's brought some spursiness over with him to Bavaria. Arsenal having a good season in comparison. They're once again challenging for their first Premier League title since 03-04, and from an outside perspective, they're not doing too bad. And actually from an inside perspective as well, you know, as a Premier League viewer myself, they're really not doing too bad. I think, you know, judging from how the teams are performing this season and recent results, it's looking like Arsenal should beat Bayern in this clash. But history does tell us otherwise. And I think it's one of the hardest matchups to call for this quarterfinals set of fixtures. Both teams are in some decent form at the moment, with Arsenal doing much better, I must say. Arteta does have a good record against Tuchel as well, as the Spiders won two and only lost once in their three meetings. So the Gunners have that going for them as well. And there's not really much Bayern have going for them at the moment, apart from the fact that they've historically been quite good against Arsenal. And they have Harry Kane playing for them, who loves a goal against Arsenal as well. But yeah, I think, I think I'm going to back Arsenal in this one. I think they're going to finally break the Bayern curse. The Gunners have been extremely impressive domestically this season, as they're keeping pace with both Man City and Liverpool in a thrilling title race, scoring the most goals in the league, whilst also having the best defence in the league as well. Bayern are top scorers in the Bundesliga too, but have very little hopes of catching Leverkusen in this title race. Never say never though, as this is Leverkusen we're talking about here. Tuchel is set to leave Bayern at the end of the season anyway, so no Champions League swan song for him. I don't think he's got the best relationship with the players or the club supporters at the moment, especially when they're having a pretty bad season by their own standards, and I just think this Arsenal side will be too much for Bayern to deal with. It very much could go the other way, there is no doubt about that, but I don't think Tuchel or Bayern have it in them to beat this Arsenal side. I mean, I'd be rooting for them, personally, but I just can't see it happening. I reckon we'll see Harry Kane goal at the Emirates. Just mark my words, that... That is coming. And then we move on to Real Madrid versus Manchester City. And yes, it is our annual Real Madrid Man City meetup as the reigning champions of Europe and England meet current La Liga leaders once again in the Champions League. And curiously, of the last two times these sides met, the winner of the tie went on to win the whole thing. Obviously, it was Real Madrid against Liverpool and then last year's Man City versus Inter. Real Madrid won it in 2022 as I mentioned and claimed their record 14th Champions League crown whilst Man City won their first Champions League back in 2023. Both teams comfortably topped their respective groups but while City breezed past Copenhagen, Real Madrid had few issues against RB Leipzig. Thank god they progressed as City Leipzig is just not an exciting clash, we've seen it too many times before and honestly 
ban it. I don't want to see these teams fighting again for the next few years because it just gets boring. Manchester City don't seem to be at the top of their game though as they're currently third in the Premier League title race and I think a part of that is down to Haaland as he's just not been as clinical as he was last season. I mean we can say he's not been clinical but he has scored 30 goals in first experiences this season so it's nothing to sniff at but he just seems to be missing more opportunities this season especially compared to last season where he's just banging the goals left and right like they've gone games where he's blanked more than once this season. You know, you might have the occasional game last season where he blanked, but this year's becoming more regular this season. City defence also hasn't been as solid as it was last season, as they've already conceded 31 goals in the league, compared to just the 33 they conceded last season. But despite all that, City have not lost a game since October 21st, which is very, very impressive. Real Madrid are currently leading La Liga with an 8-goal lead over Challengers Barcelona. Real have only lost twice all season, and at both times it was the hands of their Madrid rivals, Atleti, who we'll come on to later. Real, much like City, don't seem to be at the top of their game either, and that is despite their record this season. They're much like City in that regard, you know, they have so many special players, and it's okay that they're not all firing because they do have brilliant quality throughout, but we would be remiss not to mention Jude Bellingham. That guy has been playing some brilliant football over at Real Madrid. As such, he's not only their top goal scorer, but he also tops the goal screen charts in the Liga. If you told me that when he was playing at Dortmund or even Birmingham City, I would not have believed you, but he has turned into some brilliant player and it's going to be a joy to watch him play against his Man City side. I'm looking forward to it. Vinicius as well has also been playing brilliantly. I think he's going to cause Man City a lot of problems. I'm, that's all I'm going to say. And yeah, that's not good news for City as their defence hasn't been brilliant this season. With Edison also being out for their past few games, but he should be back for this clash. I imagine we will see him start. Their defence has been quite inconsistent though, which could cause issues for City coming to this clash. Despite those possible defensive issues, I'm going to have to give this one to City. If we just think back to Rail's campaign so far, they did struggle against RB Leipzig, and if they show up to these clashes like they did there, City will wipe the floor of them. I do reckon both teams will show up for these matches, and they should be exciting matches to watch as a neutral. While City haven't had a brilliant season by their own high standards, they're still playing some great football, and you can't just go and beat them since October by accident. Like, that is not something that just happens. You have to have quality for that to happen, and clearly City have that, if you were unaware. <laughs> Again, it could easily go either way, but I do think that City have it in the tank to progress to the next round, and if history is anything to go by, then they'll also secure their second Champions League crown. It's a really tough one to call, though. Like, these are some really tough to call quarterfinal clashes, like Real City could be anyone's game, Bayern Arsenal could be anyone's game, and Paris Saint-Germain, Barcelona, could be anyone's game. Yes, these are two sides that have shared some incredible games and some brilliant players over their history. I don't think any match is more iconic than La Remontada though. The match in which Barcelona beat PSG 6-1 at the Camp Nou to overturn the 4-0 loss they experienced at the Parc de Prance, winning the tie 6-5 on aggregate. The last time these two sides met though, wasn't as great for Barcelona. Not only did they lose the tie 5-1 on aggregate, they also lost 4-1 at the Camp Nou, thanks to an Mbappe hat-trick. And if Mbappe is going to Real Madrid, he has the plenty of opportunities to run it back. And I think he will. Barca progressed to the next round after facing what I can only describe as a broken Napoli side. I think they're on their fourth manager of the season for some reason. I don't know why they thought sacking Spalletti was the move to make, but clearly it's not worked out. I think that was always going to be the case. I think a lot of people saw that coming. Yeah, Barcelona they drew Naples before they eased past the Azuri in Catalonia. PSG saw off another Spanish side in the round of 16 as they comfortably Real Sociedad, beating the side from San Sebastian 4-1 on aggregate. Now, that was a Real Sociedad side that is going through a rough patch of form at the moment, but PSG can only beat what's in front of them, and fair play. Mbappe dragged PSG through the tie as he scored three of the Parisians' four goals. PSG also currently top league gun, what a shock, and currently sit 12 points clear of second placed Brest. Nice. Barcelona are the reigning La Liga champions but currently found themselves in second, 8 points behind Real Madrid. So they're not doing too bad but you know this time last season they were wrapping up the title so uh, what's gone wrong lads? Apart from your finances. PSG have made a concerted effort to prepare for a team without Mbappe as he is set to leave in the summer but I have no doubts the Frenchman will play a very important role in these clashes. He's going to have a lot of fun marauding down the left as he's in some brilliant form at the moment and 
I don't think he ever looks like not scoring a goal. Barcelona don't exactly have a terrible back line, but I can see PSG's potent front line causing them a lot of issues. Now, PSG don't exactly have a strong back line themselves, so it could make for a very interesting and very open set of clashes between the two sides, and it's another very tough match to call. Both teams are very evenly matched in my opinion, with Kylian Mbappe really being the only differentiating factor in my eyes, and I think PSG will just clinch it in this clash. Both teams are not at the peak of their powers, but have been enjoying good runs of form as their seasons approach the end. Barca did their customary beating of Atleti just a few weeks ago as a culmination of the turnaround in form. Even on that good form, I do see PSG just coming out on top. It's going to be a very tight tie though, as I mentioned, but I think PSG just have what it takes, that bit of extra quality to edge them over the line and beat Barcelona. I wouldn't put anything past this Barcelona side. They can pull out some good results when they need to, and if there's any place to do it, it's the Champions League. And they've got like 15 wonder kids as well, so like, <laughs> they can do anything. <laughs> and finally, Atletico Madrid versus Borussia Dortmund. This is looking like quite a good draw for either side, given the teams still in the competition, but they've had very different paths to get here. Borussia Dortmund had a favourable draw as they played PSV, a side that was domestically unbeaten when they played. Despite drawing in the Netherlands, the black and yellow finished the job in Germany. Atleti impressed in their draw as they saw off an Inter Milan side that is currently the top of Serie A, and they did through penalties. That's also an Inter side that has struggled to compete in both Europe and the league this season. They seem to only be able to do one, and they've picked the league, which, fair enough. It's not exactly the side that played in the last year's finals, but uh, still a very strong Inter side, so it's a good achievement for Atleti themselves. Dortmund haven't exactly been consistent this season, and are a far cry from the side that took it right to the wire with Bayern last season. They currently find themselves in 5th, but did finally win the Classica for the first time since 2018-19, only to go and lose to Stuttgart. Trust Dortmund though, they finally win the Classica, and it's the only time it doesn't matter. <laughs> Sounds about right. Atleti aren't kings of consistency either though, as they went from knocking out into Milan to getting battered by Barcelona in their own backyard, which, in some respects, just sums up Atleti. It's a tough one to call given both teams current form at the moment, but I think Dortmund have the advantage of being at home in the second tie. Never underestimate how strong that is. Against the football that Simeone can play and that he can get this Atleti side playing, that could be more of a hindrance, as they could play some absolute terrorism ball. <laughs> you know what Simeone can do, he can make it the worst football you've ever seen just to get a result, and I wouldn't put it past him in the Champions League. So, you know what? I'm going to back Atleti in this one. I think whatever side goes through will have a mountain to climb to make the finals, but if anyone can do it, it is Simeone and this Atleti side. I mean, they look like they're built for knockout football, and I can see in the Argentinian cook up something disgusting to ensure they progress to the semis and maybe even the finals. Atletico Madrid and Dortmund are both known for their ability to bottle things, so it really comes down to who is going to bottle harder. I do see the Spanish side screen past their German opponents. It's not going to be an easy match for either team, but I think Atleti just have that quality and just have that edge to overcome Dortmund and Simeone is not immune to playing some absolutely disgusting football and I think that's what you need in a clash like this. So yeah, I'm backing the Spaniards to go through to the semis. And yes, those have been my Champions League predictions. If you have any of your own, please leave them down in the comments below. I think I think City are a shoo-in to win the title again, still, but... Crazier things have happened. We could see an Arsenal Man City Champions League final, and I think Arsenal would win that. But yeah, I think City is still a shoe in to win the tournament as a whole. They are probably the strongest side still left in the competition. That's really all I've got to say. They may not win a Premier League title, but they will probably win a Champions League once again. Anyway, I've been O2GT. Hope you have enjoyed. Please do leave a like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.